Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to drive market or total demand. So in example one, we have two consumers. Consumer one's demand for the good looks like this. Consumer two's demand looks like this. So they both have the ex exact same demands for the product. In this case, calculating market demand is rather straightforward. Market demand is just going to be the sum of consumer one and consumer's demand, consumer two's demand for the product. So overall market demand will be given by Q subscript one plus Q subscript two. And so adding up both of these uh, demand equations and simplifying the market demand is 50 minus 5p, 25 plus 25, and minus 2.5p plus minus 2.5p gives us the minus 5p. Example two. Uh, there are 400 identical consumers, each with the following individual demand function for the good. So I represent just the individual consumer, and the demand is 10 minus 0.5p. The overall market demand is just going to be 400 times the individual consumer's demand. So for Q subscript I, we plug in 10 minus 0.5p and just simplify this. We get 4,000 minus 200p, 400 times 10, and then 400 minus 0.5 gives us the minus 200p. Example three. Consumer 1's demand for the product and Consumer 2's demand. This is going to be a little bit more challenging. These consumers have different demand functions. So getting the market demand or the aggregate demand from these two, uh, we must consider the fact that some consumers might not be in the, in the market if the price rises above a certain level. In fact, Consumer 1 will not buy the product if the price is greater than or equal to $10. So notice for Consumer 1, that if the price is ten dollars the consumer will buy zero units if the price is eleven the consumer would still buy zero units uh, so anything above ten dollars consumer one will not buy the product so the hint here is find the lowest price in which one of the consumers does not buy the product graphically it will be the consumers demand curve with the smallest vertical smallest value for the vertical intercept so the market demand, if the price is greater than or equal to $10, will be given by Consumer 2's demand. Consumer 2 will buy the product at a price of $11. If the price is $11, Consumer 2 will buy 4 units, 15 minus 11. But Consumer 1 uh, is not going to buy minus 2 units. Consumer 1 will buy 0 units. So the market demand, if the price is greater than or equal to 10 will just be given by Consumer 2's demand. Now, if the price is less than $10, both consumers in the market will be buying the product. So if the price is $9, for example, consumer 1 will buy 2 units. 20 minus 2 times 9 is uh, going to be 2. And consumer 2 will buy uh, 6 units at a price of $9. So the market demand, if the price is less than 10, we're just going to add up these two demand equations. So doing that over here. 20 plus 15 is 35 and minus 2p plus minus p is minus 3p. So the market demand basically has two parts depending if the price is greater than a certain level or lower than a certain level. Let's maybe look at this graphically. So here the, the black line here is consumer 2's demand and the blue line is consumer 1's demand. So just rewriting those. And if P is 0, Q is 20, so that's the, the horizontal intercept for consumer 1's demand. And if Q is 0, plugging 0 in for Q here, solving for P, uh, P is 10. So this is what consumer 1's demand curve looks like graphically. And doing a similar thing for consumer 2, graphing consumer 2's uh, demand curve, getting the vertical and horizontal intercept here. If P is 0, Q is 15, so that's one point on consumer 2's demand. Likewise, if Q is 0, solving that, we're going to get P equal to 15. So we got both demand curves graphed there. And you'll note here that if the price is greater than 10, 
consumer one will not be in the market here. Consumer one's demand here stops at $10. So if the price is $11, the only consumer buying the product is going to be consumer two. And consumer two would buy four units at a price of $11. So this green line is part of the market demand when the price is greater than or equal to 10. If the price is less than 10, both consumers are in the market and we're just going to add up both consumers' demand curves. We're adding that, we're just adding this up horizontally technically. And this is what we found before 35 minus 3p. So that is explaining this part of the demand when the price is less than $10. All right, let's do another example. Uh, here we're given two uh, demand curves. So consumer one's demand is price equals four minus two Q. It's gonna be given by D1. And we could solve and we could solve for the regular demand. Here's the inverse demand. We saw solve for the regular demand. So rearranging terms, we get that. And consumer two's inverse demand is price equals eight minus two Q. Graphing that demand curve, we get this line right here. Notice if Q is zero, P is eight. And so like before, uh, if the price is above a certain level, only one of the consumers will be in the market. In this case, if the price rises above $4, the only consumer that's going to buy any units would be uh, consumer two. So if the price is, say, $5, consumer one's not buying any units, consumer two will buy this many units right here. So the market demand, um, adding up both demand equations, we get Q equals six minus P. And this only holds true if both consumers are in the market and that will only happen if the price is less than $4. If the price is less than $4, both consumers will be buying a positive quantity. And if the price is above a certain level, in this case, if the price is greater than or equal to $4, only one consumer will be in the market and that's consumer two. So the market demand will just be given by consumer two's demand, which is right here for minus 0.5p. So depending on the price, uh, we'll either have this first equation for market demand or the second. Now I'm just gonna show it graphically. So graphically, if the price is greater than or equal to four, the market demand will given, be given by this green line. If the price is less than four dollars the market demand will be given by the sum of d1 and d2 just adding those demand curves horizontally and you get this green line for the market demand okay i hope you found this video helpful